It is terrifying how easy it is to do a phishing attack or a phishing hack. So easy that I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. We're going to hack the CEO of Network Chuck Coffee, Bernard Hackwell. He won't even see it coming. We're gonna build a phishing attack from the ground up, from building the phishing website, <laughs> holy crap, look at that, to sending the phishing email, it's gonna be awesome. And real quick, disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Never do this to anyone for any reason at all, unless you have permission. And a massive shout out to the sponsor of this video, thisisit.io. This is IT is more than a membership, it's a mission. I'm working with creators like David Bomble and Jeremy Chara. We're creating free content, low cost content, because we believe that IT education should not be expensive. And that's our goal, to create amazing content that's accessible to you. So consider partnering with us, thisisit.io. We actually just launched a free tier, which gives you a ton of amazing free courses and access to a Discord community that we just launched, and it's awesome. Get in there, ask questions, get help, get support. Anyways, start hacking. So my first phase in hacking Bernard Hackwell is I want to gain access to his LinkedIn profile. And the easiest way to gain access to his profile is to find out what his credentials are. I need that username and I need that password. But how do we get it? Well, we're going to trick him, of course. Social engineering. Here we go. This stuff is so fun. Watch this. And you'll get to do this right now, which is crazy. Step one is setting up a fake LinkedIn web page. And it's going to look just like LinkedIn. It'll have a username field. It'll have a password field. And then when Bernard enters his credentials on this fake web page, we'll be right there listening. Setting up this phishing page and trying to get Bernard's credentials for LinkedIn, this is called credential harvesting, one of many social engineering attacks. So now let's set the sucker up. And again, it's super easy, watch this. To do this attack, we're going to use Linux. Now I have Kali Linux, a Linux distribution for hacking, but you can use other common Linux distros like Ubuntu to do this attack. Now here we go, I'm gonna launch my terminal and we're going to use the command git clone. Now if you don't already have git installed, just sudo apt install git and get it. Anyways, so I'll use the command git clone, and we're going to clone this tool called Black Eye. It's a tool that's been around for a while, but it's still awesome. Now, real quick disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only, for you to see how easy this is, and so you can prepare and protect yourself. And also, with permission, you can mess with your friends and family. Whatever. Let's keep going. Now, I've got the link down below, but you can just take this URL, copy it, and we'll paste it right here. And go. It's going to clone that tool. And done. So from here, I'm gonna CD into black eye or change directory into my black eye folder that we just downloaded. And if I hit LS, it'll list the files I have in there. All we have to do is run this script right here, just like this. We'll type in sudo space dot forward slash black eye dot sh. You ready? Put in your password and okay, we're on our way. Now, first we have to choose what type of phishing website we wanna use. And we have options. Look at, this is kind of crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're doing this for educational purposes, but man, if you were a black hat hacker, this is pretty stinking easy. So I'm going to choose LinkedIn, which is number nine, and I'm going to hit enter and that's it. I'm going to wait for it to get going here and it's ready. <laughs> like the phishing website is ready to go. That URL right there. We'll give this to Bernard and watch what happens. So I'll copy that link real quick, fire up my web browser and go to it. And you'll probably get this right here. It's not working right now. It's fine. We'll fix it. It has to do with a service we're using called Ngrok. It requires you to have an account. Now, this is free. No big deal. But we do have to set one up. So we'll navigate on over to ngrok.com. Again, completely free. Just sign up for a free account. Enter your stuff in there. And once you're logged in, ready to go, you're going to click on Setup and Installation. And then right here under Step 2, we have this command right here. All we have to do is take that command, copy it, get back to our terminal here in Kali or whatever Linux distro you're using and paste that in there. Go. That's it. That issue is fixed. So now let's try it again. Pseudo space period forward black eye dot sh. Again, number nine for LinkedIn and we wait for it to build. Okay, so now when we take this URL right here and we copy it and we paste it into our web browser, here's what happens. <laughs> Holy crap. Look at that. If you saw this, would you think it was anything but LinkedIn? And then if we look back at our terminal, look what happened. We got some info about Bernard Hackwell here. Like, hey, here's his public IP address. Got him. We got info on his web browser. I mean, tons of valuable information. But right now, we're waiting for him to log in. We're just ready to pounce. Ready, waiting. The trap is set. And let's watch what happens. Bernard will go up here, try to log in, type in his username, his password, and click sign in. Boom. Now, notice what happened here. It took me to LinkedIn. Like, try again. Let me get back in there. Try feed. Nah, it's not working so well, but it legit refreshed me to LinkedIn. So I'm like, ah, let me try to get there again. Okay, LinkedIn's working fine for Bernard. And Bernard is none the wiser. Over here, we got some information on freaking Bernard. We got his email address. We got his password. 
saved to our text file here. How crazy is that? Gosh, that's so cool. Okay, in theory, that's pretty stinking cool, but then how do we get Bernard to click on that link? <laughs> Easier said than done, right? We have to somehow get that link to him, make him click on it, and make him try to log in. Give him a reason to. And that's phase two of our attack, phishing emails. This phishing email will craft to make it look like it's coming from LinkedIn. Like it might say, hey, Bernard, you got a really important message from a colleague. It's, a, it's an emergency. Click on this link now to log in and check it. And we'll make it look like it came from LinkedIn. Like it'll be legit. That's a phishing email. No, it doesn't have to be an email. It could be a, uh, it could be a text, which we call a smishing attack. <laughs> the S standing for, you know, SMS. So that text we send him could be the same thing. It's from LinkedIn. Hey, click on this link. And we have that link there. And it's, those are more dangerous, I think, because we're, we're used to defending ourselves against emails, right? Don't click on links in emails unless you can verify where the email is coming from. But texts are different. You see, most people are not concerned about viruses on their cell phones. So clicking on links is not, doesn't really occur to them. It's a big deal. And it doesn't even have to be a text. It could be a phone call. We call these vishing attacks because, you know, the V stands for voice. So vishing. Uh, we could call Bernard up. Pretend to be LinkedIn. Say, hey, Bernard, I need you to go log into LinkedIn. Here, use this URL to log in, to secret login, and uh, just put in your username and password. Cool, gotcha. Okay, thanks, Bernard. That's all I needed. But you know what? I say we go old school. Let's go the email route. Now, typically, a phishing email is like going out to lots of people, like a mass email. Like if I didn't care whose LinkedIn credentials I got, I would just send a bunch of phishing emails out to everyone with my URL saying, hey, log into your LinkedIn. You got a message. That'd be a typical phishing email attack. But I don't want just anyone. I want Bernard. I want Bernard's information. So when I target someone specifically with a phishing email, that's called a spear phishing attack. <laughs> Very nautical themed here, but the idea is that phishing, traditionally you'll be using a net, just trying to catch whatever whatever person you can get. Whereas spear phishing, you kind of have someone on target. You're gonna throw that spear, the gun, I, I don't know, I don't spear fish. Do you spear fish? Let me know below if you spear fish. Anyways. So spear phishing is when I focus on one individual, one target I have in mind, Bernard. <laughs> and even more so, this attack goes further uh, because I'm targeting not just anyone, not just a regular guy, not a barista, not a uh, clerk. I'm targeting the CEO of Network Chuck Coffee, the highest guy in the company. Now, when hackers target important people in a company, people who have influence and power, this is called whaling. Bernard's my whale. I'm going to get him. So here we go. Now, sending a phishing email is also pretty easy. Now, we're going to use Linux again. I'll be using Kali. And we're going to use the Social Engineering Toolkit, or SET. That will come pre-baked on Kali Linux. So that's why I always recommend that. Here, we can do a lot, but we're going to stay focused. We're going to send a phishing email. Let's do it. So option one, Social Engineering Attacks. We're going to send a mass mailer attack. So I'll choose option five. Now, again, if I were just doing a regular phishing attack, it'd be, yeah, let's do a mass mail. Let's send it to everybody. But no, we're doing one single email address. We're doing a spear phishing attack, more specifically a whale, because Bernard is a whale. So we're going to choose option one. We're going to send that to bernard.hackwell at gmail.com. So in this case, you would have to at least know your target's email address. Enter. You can choose to use your own SMTP relay, or you can just use your Gmail account. I have a another Gmail account I can use. I would recommend a fresh Gmail account, one that you don't normally use. So here we go. Gmail. I'll enter my credentials. I'm not going to show you this. I'll say it's from LinkedIn messaging. That'll be the from name and then my Gmail password and then some other information. Attach file. No, you could attach a file, blah, blah, blah. And the email subject, this is important because I want to make Bernard click on this. I'll say important LinkedIn message. That's, that's good enough, right? HTML or plain. I'll just do plain for now. And then I can enter the body of the message. This is where I can put the link in right here. So I'll say, hey, Bernard, you received a message from, let's just make up a name. Richard, it's been marked as urgent. Check it now. And we'll put our link in. So I need to set up our attack once more with black eye. So I'll do that real quick because it's so stupid easy. Nine for LinkedIn. Cool. We got our link. I'm just going to paste that sucker in my fake email. Get back to my other terminal here and paste. Then I'll type in all capital end to end this. Then end once more. And I believe it's sending right now. Yeah, it's done. It sent it. Cool. So now let's go see if Bernard got the email. Yep, there it is right there. Hey, Bernard, you received a message from Richard. It's been marked as urgent. Check it now. And I'm like, yeah, I should check this. Now the link, it looks kind of fishy, right? <laughs> you could change that. You could change the way it looks. But Bernard doesn't care. It's an urgent message. Let's check it. Let's get logged into LinkedIn right now. And of course, right now, I just got a ton of info on who this Bernard guy is. And when Bernard logs in, it takes him to his homepage. And he has no idea that I just got his username and password. I got him, man. I got him. 
Now, what I just showed you is just one way we could do this. We can get even trickier. Like maybe in that phishing email, I don't have a link. Maybe I have a file that he has to download. I'm like, hey, Bernard, download this file. It's from Richard. Maybe it's a Word document. But in this file is actually some malware, some malicious software. And for this case, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to mess with his computer's host file. Pop quiz, where does the host file live on Windows? Comment below. The host file will override DNS on your system. So typically Bernard, when he types in linkedin.com, his computer will ask the DNS server, its DNS server, hey, where does linkedin.com live? And the DNS server will reply with an IP address. And then the computer's like, cool, I know how to get there, let's go. But Bernard's computer will look in the host file first before it asks a DNS server where certain things are. If we can mess with that file, we can control where things live for Bernard. So for example, I can make LinkedIn for Bernard, go to a different IP address, save that file. And when he goes to LinkedIn.com, he goes somewhere else. <laughs> it's my Halloween thing here. Going to activate that real quick, scare my kids. Now this is obviously not LinkedIn, but just like we do with our phishing webpage, we can make a site that looks just like LinkedIn. And every time Bernard types in LinkedIn.com, it takes him here. This is often referred to as DNS poisoning because we're poisoning the DNS. And this is the most simple way to do it, just messing with a host file. You can actually hack a DNS server. We'll get to that stuff later. And as far as phishing goes, this technique is called farming, pH farming. And essentially it's what we just did. We set up a fake website and we poison the DNS. In this case, Bernard's computer, his host file, to always go to our fake website, even when he's typing in the legit domain name. This is nefarious because you think you're being safe. Like I know when I check my email, whether it's spam, you know, unsolicited email coming to me or a legit phishing email, if I got a link in there telling me to check my account, hey, check your bank account, hey, check this, I never click that link. I will go to a new tab, log into my bank account the same way, the normal way I always do, and that way I know I'm safe. But if someone hacked my DNS, if someone poisoned my DNS, or I downloaded malware and they changed my host file, I may not even be aware of that happening. So yeah, we successfully hacked Bernard Hackwell. Didn't even see it coming. So now the question is, how do you avoid the pitfalls that Bernard Hackwell has fallen into. How do you keep yourself safe from phishing attacks? The biggest thing you can do for you and your company is make sure you have some good spam filters. Spam is any email that's just unsolicited, meaning you didn't ask for it, you don't want it. Who is this person sending me this email? I don't even know who you are. I mean, we're used to that stuff, right? We get it all the time. And where does it normally go? It goes to our spam folder. And that's fantastic. So if you use any kind of modern email system, Gmail, Yahoo maybe, or just your corporate email, you're gonna have a spam folder and stuff you don't really care about goes there. <laughs> and that's good. Now, sometimes it doesn't. Hackers do get smarter. Like the way we crafted the email today wasn't very sophisticated, but hackers do get crazy. Which brings me to my next point. Just be careful about clicking on links or maybe you don't even click on links. Don't click them, don't download them. If you receive a notification of a secure message from your bank or something, just go log into your bank. You'll find it just like that, easy enough, because you never know. Now, sometimes we have to click on links, I get it. So when you're looking at your email, make sure it's from a reputable source. You can open up the header, like in Gmail here. You can look at the information, see who it's from. So like Bernard got an email from This Is IT. You can see most of the information here. Most important part is down here. This is an encrypted message. It's from Teachable. Just make sure it's from a verifiable source, someone you know, or a company or service you know. And then lastly, realize it's not just email. We talked about earlier how you can get text with links in it. Like right now I'm getting spam over text like crazy because of the election. Vote for this person, vote for this person. You gotta consider this, vote for this person. Through texting, how do they even get my number? And some of these texts could be legit phishing, trying to get me to do something. Try to steal my credentials. Could be a phone call, vishing. Oh, by the way, texting was smishing. And it could even be instant messaging. I mean, Facebook Messenger, any kind of IM app. You can get spam on that. It's actually called spam when it's on an instant message like that. Spam for instant message. <laughs> and also keep in mind this, it's not always going to be one type of attack. They may not always be using a credential harvesting attack just trying to get your username and password. They could trick you into doing all kinds of stuff. Social engineering is amazing. It's terrifying because again, they're hacking the human brain, the human OS. And in some cases, actually, let's be honest, in a lot of cases, it's not too hard to do. So for example, maybe I don't want Bernard's credentials. Maybe I'm going to use a phishing email, a spear phishing email, and maybe I'll pretend to be one of his vendors. Maybe one of his coffee vendors. Like, hey, um, this is homebrew coffee and uh, I've got an invoice I need you to pay. Because maybe through some reconnaissance, I researched Bernard Hackwell and, and, and Network Chuck Coffee and I figured out who their supplier is. We covered that in the last video. Anybody can be a hacker, just gathering information, being a snooping person on social media. And with that info, I crafted a phishing email saying, hey, I'm, I'm John from Homebrew Coffee and I got this invoice I need you to pay. Click the link, go ahead and put your payment information in and I'll accept your payment. 
That happens, man. That happens all the time. Invoice scams are legit. And most of the time, especially when you're not tech savvy or maybe you're not even thinking about it, you're just working and you get an email from a supplier you recognize and they say, hey, I need you to pay this invoice. And you're like, oh crap, I thought I paid that. And you, and you feel bad. Maybe they make you feel bad about it. They prey on your emotions. So you click on it, you go pay that, then you're done. They have your bank information. They might drain your account. They could do all kinds of stuff. Phishing attacks. I told you, I told you, they're pretty easy to do. And what we did here is pretty basic. But even though it's basic, it could fool a lot of people, but they do get more sophisticated. Now, again, what I showed you here, do not use on anyone. This is for educational purposes only. I'm not sure you can play around with this. Mess with your family and stuff. With permission, again, permission's key here. <laughs> but I showed you this so you can be aware of the types of attacks that we could face. And that it doesn't take a genius, a hacking genius to do these attacks. It could be a kid in his basement playing around. So what you could do with this is, again, make sure you know and you're looking out for phishing scams and phishing emails and, and spam and spam and vishing and smishing and all these crazy words, but also educate your family. Maybe older folks in your family who they, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of our grandparents have iPhones now. So we get calls all the time. Hey, how do I do this? How do I fix this? Make sure they're educated on how to protect themselves against phishing scams. Say, hey, grandma, don't click on anything, please, ever. <laughs> Under any circumstances, do not click that link. Don't answer phone calls and give information away. Don't do any of that. That's who these people target. All right, that was episode two of our Security Plus course. A course I'm working on with Jeremy Chara and David Bombal. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait for you to see more of this. And if you also can't wait, because we're releasing a video each week, one video, but we're also making videos much faster than that. So if you wanna see more, consider joining thisisit.io. It's more than a membership, it's a mission. When you join that mission, you're helping myself, David Bomble, Jeremy Chara, produce as much free or low cost content as we can to give to people like you. And of course there's perks. You get access to our stuff before we release it for free on YouTube. And you also get community. We have a Discord community. People are already in there helping each other out, learning, trying to make themselves better, building new careers. So consider joining. We have a free tier, which you can just go in there and just hang out some awesome free courses. And then of course, if you want the extra goodies or support us in any way, you can upgrade. And hey, if you like this video, hit that like button. It does help. And if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, if you want to learn more about hacking or networking or anything IT, if you want to watch me geek out and get over caffeinated every day, yeah, consider subscribing. <laughs> hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can be like ready when I post a video. And speaking of LinkedIn, if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, I'm there, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, join my Discord server. But yeah, that's all I got. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and I'll catch you guys next time.